Hey everybody, welcome to Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. My name is Reed with Best Made Videos. We are a wedding videography company based out of West Seattle, Washington. And today I am joined by one of my good friends, Leslie McFarland of Leslie Blue Photography. And we actually had the pleasure of working together earlier this year in probably one of my favorite weddings of the year. And we can talk about that with Tyler and Chloe uh, down in uh, Enumclaw, I guess. Uh, so thank you so much for coming in. Uh, why don't you say hi, introduce yourself, and tell us about your company. Hi, um, my name is Leslie, and I um, I run Leslie Blue Photography. Um, so I basically just specialize in weddings. And so, uh, what is it about weddings, kind of in particular, that you enjoy? What is it the part that you know part of the day, or what do you enjoy about weddings, and, and why do you do that? Um, so I guess the thing I love most about weddings is I just love sh um, seeing two couples in love. So I, I love um, I love photographing the emotion, um, everything that unfolds throughout the day, and um, the interactions with the bride and groom. I would say my favorite favorite um, time to capture. Um, throughout the wedding is the first look because I feel like it's such an intimate and beautiful moment shared just between the bride and groom. And I feel like a lot of times is the only time they get to spin with each other in that intimate setting before everything gets, you know, all crazy with the day of the wedding and the guest and and everything. Yeah, it's tough. It's like so much of the wedding, you know, you're trying to capture, but you, you know, you're also trying to get portraits and things and moments together, but then they obviously are being torn around a thousand different ways. Exactly. Uh, and so you had just come off work uh, today to come over here. I appreciate uh, it's busy. Uh, talk about what do you do when you're not photographing weddings? Okay. So when I'm not photographing, I work part-time at Children's Therapy Center. It's a um, nonprofit organization that, um, helps children um, that have developmental delays. Um, and so I just take care of the billing portion of that. So I just make sure that children are good to go for billing, um, billing purposes, and be able to be seen for speech therapy services, occupational therapy, physical therapy. So. And how did you get involved in that? Um, so I started, um, long story, so um, I started working in the medical field working as a phlebotomy, so I was taking people's blood, so vampire, which is what a lot of people like to say. <laughs> And so I was doing that. I did that for like four years. And then eventually I wanted to make my way to the office. So um, I um, got in contact with one of the office managers at Marybridge Pediatrics. And um, she hired me on there as a receptionist. And so I was a receptionist there for maybe like a month or two. And then I moved on and I got hired as a referral coordinator um, at a pain clinic. And then from the pain clinic, I went to a family clinic um, as a referral coordinator as well. And then I started taking on more billing stuff. And then now... I'm at Children's Therapy Center, and so I love it there, and I don't plan to go anywhere. And I'm only part-time, so I have a really great schedule. Yeah, and I think we had even talked about that at the wedding that we worked at, because, you know, everyone's like, well, you got to, like, are you going to do photography full-time? You said, yeah. well, no, like, I actually really like what I do. You know, I enjoy kind of having the split schedule and being able to, do. you know, talk about that. Yeah, I do. Well, I enjoy the split schedule, because I feel like I'm still um, in the job that I do daily, even though I don't have... Um, daily interaction with children, um, our families, if I'm not talking about billing, but I feel like I'm still making a big difference in um, these children's lives and, you know, helping them and assisting them um, when it comes to their billing and, if, um, and, you know, everything that entails and being able to be seen um, for the developmental delays. Um, but I do, I just love having um, the part-time job because I feel like it's just, it, it gives me balance in a sense. And that's something I'm always trying to seek. Um, and then with weddings, I feel like I could be a little bit more selective with who, um, who, you know, who I take on as a bride and groom or a Leslie Blue photography um, couple. Um, because I don't have to worry about it being full time and, you know, and try to get a lot of weddings. Cause I only try to do like 10, 10 a year. But that's still good. I mean, I think that's still a good number and it's a good diversity. Talk about what kinds of clients do you find, uh, you know, are attracted to you and that you attract, you know, what do you, who do you like to work with? I mean, obviously you like Chloe and Tyler, <laughs> you know, you can talk about them too. Yeah. Um, so I'm, so I'm really, I'm really chilled. I'm really laid back. And, um, I feel like a lot of my clients are usually really laid back, really chill, kind of go with the floor. Um, go with the flow type thing. I'm um, just like Chloe and Tyler. They were, I'm. Um, they were amazing. And you know, as you were saying, I felt like that was one of the best weddings of the year for me because they were just go with the flow, easy, laid back. Um, I mean, and it, I mean, and they didn't really have like expectations of our like, oh, I want you to do this specifically. It was just kind of like, oh, whatever you feels best. You know, totally. You know, clients that just totally believe in you and your vision and you know and love your work. And so they trust you in fully and completely. 
Yeah, I, I think it's it's important as a photographer to find you know clients that trust you and your process. And um, it was funny because I think that they had said like numerous times during the day, like we've never had like any sort of <laughs> like any sort of professional photo of them. So like you know, I think you were even showing them like stuff on the back of the camera, just you know. And it was it was a gorgeous day, yeah. and like with the storm clouds and everything. But they were like. I mean, they were just yeah. losing their minds because like their <laughs> expectations like were so low, yeah. which I mean, obviously like they should have had higher expectations. Yeah. Yes, of course. Well, bringing yeah. you on, like it's going to be, you know, they should expect something good, yes. but you know, they were just like, I think, you know, their mom could have taken a cell phone photo. I mean, they were just so nice. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, um, so you, you attract, uh, laid back couples, yeah. um, and so, uh, talk about kind of what, what is your process when the, uh, approaching the wedding and, and like, do you like to, to really kind of have everything planned out ahead of time or do you kind of let the day flow out or how do you, how do you approach that? So I guess it really kind of depends on the couple. Um, so usually when it comes to the day, I do like to have a timeline and like to have an idea of when we'll be taking certain photos, family photos, when dinner will be and, and et cetera. Um, but I do also realize that it's very rare that a timeline ever gets followed um, exactly um, because things run behind time and that's totally normal. So I just try to, I like to have an initial timeline just for my reference, just so I can know, okay, we should be doing this around this time. Or if this doesn't go as planned, we need to do this and squish them, squish this into a different time or whatnot. Um, because I feel like as photographers and even I'm sure you can say it as a videographer, you're kind of, um, in charge of keeping the time and kind of having things go along and moving along as best as you can. And, and also calming the bride and groom, letting them know, you know, if something's not running on time, that it's normal and that it'll be fine. You know, just trying to just make sure everything stays calm and, and, you know, as, you know, and as on time as much as possible, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's always a tough balance because I don't think, you know, we would ever like try to freak a bride and groom out and be like, oh, it's really behind schedule. But it is kind of a thing because like <laughs> some weddings, you'll be like five minutes behind and they'll ask you like, oh, is everything OK? And you'll say, oh, no, it's, you know, it's fine. But then sometimes it'll be like an hour and a half behind, yeah. but you still have to tell them like, oh, no, it's totally fine. But like in your head, you're like, oh, my gosh, yes. like, what are we going to do here? <laughs> Uh, so it is like that tough balancing act because you do have to kind of keep like the um, the strong front no matter what to them, you know, yeah. not let them know if you might be freaking out. Uh, so like, have you always taken photos? Like, when did you find out that that was something that you wanted to do? So I was... I found out that I wanted to start doing photography when I was planning my own wedding. And so my mother-in-law, she actually does photography. So, you know, I always had my, my camera, but it wasn't a full frame at the time. It was just a, a um, you know, a, um, oh, I don't remember what to call it because I don't Oh, it's like a crop them. sensor? Yeah, the yeah. crop sensor camera. And so I was always taking pictures with her, landscape type pictures when we would go on vacation or we would go do a little hike or go to the waterfalls and take pictures. So I, I always loved photography in a sense, and I've had my first camera since maybe about when I was maybe 19, 20, um, 29 now. Um, so, um, but as I was planning my own wedding um, and I was looking for a photographer and um, that's when I realized that, you know, I think I will want to try out this on my own. So that's when I um, got in contact with some other photographers and, and I got uh, my feet dirty and started doing like family shoots and senior photos. And then I finally got my first wedding and then I started second shooting and that's where I found my true love is, um, was when I started doing weddings because they're just beautiful. Just seeing couples share the love and just seeing people in love is just beautiful. Um, but I've always had a thing for photography because when I was younger, like I don't have any family photos, um, no pictures of myself. I mean, I can't even tell you what I used to look like when I was younger because I don't remember um, because we moved so much in my lifetime that my parents um, never really kept any photos. So for me, you know, being able to capture memories that um, families and, and even kids would be able to look back on is really important to me. That's fascinating. So why, uh, was it because of jobs or why did you have to move around so much when you were a kid? Um, just, um, like, um, <laughs> my mom is just really dysfunctional. <laughs> so, so we moved a lot. Like I would be with my dad in North Carolina sometimes. I would be with my grandma in Alton. Um, I would be with my mom in Georgia. I mean, I've even been to Florida and then, um, Washington where I was originally born here, but I don't remember much about it because I, I think I left here, uh, I was young when I left here, but just, you know, lots of floating around going to whoever would, you know, whoever would take us in. Yeah. 
<laughs> and so having those, those, uh, you miss having those, those memories, those photos. I really do. Um, and, and that's another thing, like with my family now, we make sure we get family photos every year. And, um, I mean, and, you know, like I got, I did my maternity photos when I was pregnant with my four year old and, you know, things like that for me are so important. So I like to be able to be able to capture those memories for other people and be able to provide that for them. Yeah. It's funny, uh, as someone that, that makes a living off of capturing memories, I am really uh, good about throwing things away <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and uh, my mom is bordering on a little hoarding sometimes. Okay. She'll have some stuff. And uh, so we're, we're cleaning out her garage right now. We were over having dinner a couple weeks ago, and my mom was like, oh, do you want any of this stuff? And I looked at no, like I don't even need to look at it. I just know, like, throw it away. And Dorothy goes to like the trash and pulls all of the stuff out and she sees like these old photos, mm -hmm. you know, and she's like, well, I can't believe that you would, you know, these are your photos. Yeah. Why would you want to <laughs> <throw> these <laughs> away? <laughs> and we kind of get it, got in an argument. So no, we just did, 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 did that. So we take them inside and we show them to my mom and she goes, these aren't even of you. These are of <laughs> our neighbor. I don't know why we even have these photos. These are the Fernies that live down the street. These aren't even us. And Dorothy was just like, we got to keep all this stuff. And I said, come on. But no, I do, you know, I think it's important to have, uh, you know, as someone like, you know, my father passed away. I think mm -hmm. it's important to have like photos and you know, like, I have a big photo of him, like in my office that he did for like advertising. Nice. So, but it's nice. So giving those memories and things that you didn't have, right. So that is kind of where you get your motivation now? Yeah, basically just being able to capture those memories for other people. Um, and especially, um, like, especially when it comes to weddings, um, a part of the weddings I really like are the family photos. Although I don't personally do family photos outside of the weddings, but I feel like the family photos for me is important. And I feel like for a lot of people, it's also important. Um, so getting those family photos and just getting those photos of guests coming in, you know, um, I feel like it's important. And a lot of guests are actually, I mean, not guests, well, guests. And I guess maybe usually the couples are really happy that those photos are captured because they're like, I didn't even realize this was going on. Like, thank you so much for capturing these photos. And sometimes they turn out to be the photos they love the most or those photos where they didn't realize they were happening of their guests and, you know, of their families and, and whatnot. Yeah. I always, you know, when we're doing video and like, even like with Chloe Tower, mm -hmm. I'm, I always roll video on the family photos. And I know that a lot of photographers I work with will be like, you, you are the only videographer we ever work with that rolls on. Cause we always yeah. do. Like if yeah. it's usually it's during cocktail hour and I'll have Jeff or whoever my assistant is go get cocktail hour. Cause that's also important. Mm -hmm. And then I'll always roll on family photo. You know, it might be half an hour yeah. of kind of going through, but, um, no, it's the same thing. Like that's the feedback I get too, is people. So, Oh, having those shots of like my grandma and grandpa or things. Cause you don't know, just like kind of capturing those moments. And I do think like a lot of like other videographers mm -hmm. or or like even even like some photographers even like with cocktail hour guests and things like they'll focus on like detail detail details yeah. but like not the actual people do you ever do you know that do you find that um you know i have seen that working with some people i have seen that it, um sometimes the focus is more on like little details um but i also have worked with photographers when the focus is on um the guests and so, especially when it comes to like cocktail hour and whatnot. And so, um, like some photographers I work with, they, it's like, oh, go get the cocktail hour and make sure you get in the guest interaction. And then and sometimes it's a time where there's not much going on. It's just kind of detailed time. And, um, for me, if there is a cocktail hour, I do, um, like to focus and get um, pictures of the, um, the guest interactions and whatnot. Um, so you said you kind of got into photography when you were planning your own wedding and yeah. I kind of remember what all this was going on. So talk about kind of what was, uh, what was the process like of planning your wedding? I mean, you guys got married somewhat recently, a couple years ago, right? Yes. Yes. So kind of talk about what was that whole experience like kind of in the Seattle wedding community kind of planning that, you know, it was, um, <laughs> It was fun, but it was really stressful just, you know, trying to have, I mean, having a budget and trying to stick to that budget. And, um, and my now husband wasn't really much into the planning area, but it would come to, uh, I would like find vendors that I'd want and I would tell him, oh, I found this vendor and this is that. And then he'll be like, oh, well, no, that's, we can't do that because of it's not in our budget or whatnot. So it was, um, you know, a lot of reaching out to people, a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of times you would find someone and it's like, oh, I can't really afford them or stuff like that. So you want to want to offend them. So you'd kind of not talk to them or whatever like that, or little things like that. And, um, um, I mean, but I guess overall it was really fun. Um, 
I mean, once everything, seeing everything come to fruitation, I guess, um, is what really made it everything. But we were planning it for like a year and a half. So we did start early because we were just saving up within that time frame of planning the wedding. Um, but I guess overall, it was really fun. Um, it was fun meeting a lot of the vendors and talking to a lot of different vendors and um, and just seeing how people operate and um, how people's communication is and whatnot. So it was a lot of, um, you know, seeing that. So and seeing how a lot of vendors just work so differently. It was just, I mean, everyone's workflow and how they do things are just completely different. So that was something. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I guess if I had to do it again. Um, cause we ended up inviting a lot of people cause my husband, he wanted to invite all his family, like all 150 something of them. And I have a really tiny family. So it was just my, my siblings basically. And a couple of my coworkers, cause I invited some of my coworkers cause I don't really know that many people. <laughs> and I figured a lot of them wouldn't come, but you know, a majority of the people that we invited didn't come, you know, majority of my husband's family. So I feel like if we were to do it again, we would just make sure we just invited it you know, those closest to us instead of trying to invite the invite extended family and whatnot and saving a little bit more money because the money that we spent on like the food and, and everything like that could have been spent else, elsewhere if we didn't invite so many people. So I, I guess that is something that I would do differently. Yeah, but I think there's a couple different takeaways from that story. I mean, I think that uh, like you having gone through the planning process here, trying to be on the, you know, on a budget, which everybody is, yeah. um, you, you can relate now, right. When you're talking to brides and grooms, cause I think like, you know, some people that like haven't been married or were married, you know, 20 years ago and it was mm -hmm. like way different or whatever, like it, it, it very much is like a different way of planning now. Right. Yeah. And like, in terms of like being able to email people right away and like talk online and kind of do all these things. So you kind of gone through that as like that modern kind of bride. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I guess. I never even thought about it in that way. Cause I guess it was different back in the day. Oh yeah. I mean, like yeah. I'll, I'll even have, you know, um, people come on the podcast and they, you know, they've been married for 30 years mm -hmm. and it's like, well, you're not, you know, I mean, you're, you're <laughs> seeing it now, and then, but you're not seeing it on the side that a lot of like brides and grooms and so far now, yeah. you know, and then also, you know, having like seen how like other vendors work, yeah. I think it's also like really interesting too. Um, talk about your photography. Cause I think you had one of my dear friends do your photography for your wedding. If I'm not. Correct. Oh yes. Rebecca Jane photography. So Alex and Rebecca. And so, um, um, we were only expecting to get Alex, and then at the last minute, we decided to add a second photographer because um, after like reading the questionnaire and and stuff, it was like, oh well, you know, you might want to have a second photographer. And so we got really lucky, and we had both of them. <laughs> and originally, we were only supposed to have Alex and someone else, but we got Alex and Rebecca, and they are so amazing. I mean, our photos are beautiful. I mean, we love them so much. They did a fantastic job. I mean, they were so calm throughout the day. I mean, and they were always right there capturing. I mean, they capture shots that I didn't even know that, I mean, I didn't even know I was doing things I didn't know I was doing. I mean, just all types of stuff. They're magnificent. They really are great. And I think I saw you posting some lately on Facebook. Were you updating some things? What yeah, I was actually finally getting my photos online because there's a lot of people asking me about them because there's a lot of photos that they know that, you know, Rebecca and Alex took. So I finally uploaded them. I mean, I love how Facebook just kinds, kind of automatically tags people. <laughs> So I finally got all those uploaded and it's, it's nice going through, um, you know, um, memory lane and looking at all the photos and having the interactions with the guests and family members that were there because um, they, you know, they're enjoying them just as much as I have enjoyed them. Yeah, I was going to say, what's it like now? Because it's been, what, when did you guys get married? Um, May of 20, May 21st, 2015. Okay. Yeah. So how has it been kind of going back through and seeing all that stuff? Uh, it's been fun. I mean, just looking at the little things, just, you know, lots of laughs, you know, lots of, um, I mean, and lots of laughs, lots of like mixed feelings. And I'm an emotional person. So I find myself looking at things, you know, like, oh, especially the first look photos. I really love those because seeing, you know, my husband, how he was so surprised to see me. And, and I remember our conversation because he wasn't expecting me to wear the dress that I wore. So he was just so shocked, you know, and it, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, where'd you guys get married at? We got married at the Gibson House Event Center. So basically, it's um, it's an Irish pub um, on top of. Um, so excuse me, it's it was um, it's a center on top of an Irish pub. So it's an Irish pub, and then they have this little event center that um, people can use for like events and whatnot on top of it. And it was like in the Centralia. So um, because Ryan, um, he's from. Uh, Toledo. So he's like in that area and a lot of his family's in that area. And my family, I was like, oh, my siblings still come. <laughs> Cause 
like I said, I have a really small family. So we decided to find something in that area, and we found um, um, the Gibson House Event Center, and it was perfect. Um, lots of light, like big. The food was the food was really good. Yeah, so um, really good, um, really good place. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and so, um, talk about uh, kind of your when you're not photographing, and, and now that you're, you're married, talk about kind of your your family now. What's it like? What do you do when you're not you know working and things? How do you how do you stay busy? Oh man. So I have a 13 year old, and um, I have a four year old, and so they pretty much keep me busy, especially the four year old. So, so usually if I'm not photographing or doing any work, um, I'm maybe at a park. With this weather right now, we're, we haven't been really going to the park that much. But um, but usually at the park or just doing something inside. My daughter, um, she has a bike, so she loves going to ride her bike. Um, my 13-year-old, she's usually occupied at a friend's house lately or her friend's coming over, so I don't see much of her. But when she is, you know, not having friends over or, you know, or not busy, then we're, we've are we been watching, like, Sabrina, um, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix. So that's something else I do. Um, and just, you know... Um, keeping, keeping. I mean, taking care of the house and the kids and working and school functions. Um, my daughter, um, my youngest is in gymnastics um, and both of my girls are in swim lessons right now. So that's been something we're doing a lot of lately. Um, and so, I mean, I guess that's just pretty much it. Just running around, staying busy, having, you know, dinner, um, um, occasionally going to Chuck E. Cheese with the kids, you know, so <laughs> it's just a lot of mom stuff, I guess. Do you find it challenging between working and, and your family then to, be, to balance photography or do you kind of enjoy that creative outlet that, that it brings? You know, I do enjoy the creative outlet that it brings. Um, I don't feel like I have too much to balance since I, you know, I am part time and I have the job and, and the photography part time. So I feel like I have a lot more time with my family than someone that's doing full time may have. I mean, depending on, you know, their organization. But um, like, um, I mean, like my last wedding was was it? It was October. Yeah, that was my last wedding. And so I don't have any more weddings for a year. So and, and now I have all another bit of time. All my galleries have been submitted and sent out to the um, to my clients. Um, and um, and now I have nothing but time. So now it's just pretty much just whatever, you know, and just getting prepared for, you know, engagement season. So that is something that I'm doing now. But I guess I, I, I guess I just I feel like I have good balance. I feel like um, yeah, I, I, I like the outlet. Um, I'm a big planner, so I try to plan things out as much as I can. Like, I plan my months out, and um, um, and I feel like that helps me a lot. Uh, do you ever rely on your husband to help you do anything, or are you kind of running the show and he's um, just kind of figuring things out? <laughs> my husband, he works a lot, so he's usually always at work. Um, and he gets home late. He'll get home anywhere between 6, 7, sometimes 8 o'clock at nighttime. So I'm usually, you know, running the show, taking care of everything. <laughs> You know, on the weekends, that's when we um, that's when we plan a lot of our times together and time with the family and the girls. Um, but yeah, it's usually just me running, running everything, making the shots. So, <laughs> um, so I want to go back to now to you kind of getting into photography and, like you said, so you know you're planning your wedding and, and you started second shooting. Um, did you enjoy that you know, process, kind of working with different photographers and kind of balancing that to kind of find your voice as a photographer? How did that work? Definitely. Um, you know, it's I enjoy um, second shooting and I still second shoot now. Um, but it's always nice because some um, some of the photographers that I second shot with, you know, they're they're so willing to share and explain um, what they're doing during the process. So I felt like I learned a lot from second shooting. Um, and then you're able to be a little creative as well as far as angles and what shots you're getting because they want you to focus on different angles and and more of like, you know, stuff that they can't do. Um, and so I thought, you know, it was really good, really helpful um, for some photographer, I mean, for some of the photographers that I worked for as far as second shooting, um, there were some experiences where it was probably wasn't like um, the best experience in a sense, <laughs> because, yeah, you know, like different personalities and everything. Um, but for the most part, I've had a really, um, really fun. I mean, a lot of fun second shooting. Um, I've second shoot with a lot of different photographers. Um, I know I've second shot a few times with um, Rebecca Jane photography with um, Alex. Um, and so those are always a lot of fun. Um, I mean, they're full of information. <laughs> And they're so great at what they do. So I feel like it's always a learning experience, usually when I'm second shooting. 
Um, and so talk about uh, when you doing the second shoot and kind of getting your business off the ground. And then when you did that first wedding that was yours, mm -hmm. uh, was that stressful? What was that wedding like? Do you remember that? Do you remember any specific funny stories or moments from that wedding? I do remember that wedding. Um, and I'm, I'm almost certain it was 2015. Um, when I did that wedding and, um, you know, it was fun. Um, the clients, they were really sweet. Um, and they knew that I was new, never done a wedding before. So, um, so, you know, they were really, um, really chill, really sweet. I do remember it because it wasn't really stressful as a sense because there was so much time and things kind of flowed on time and, um, they didn't really want that many photos. Um, so, um, I guess it was mainly, it was more of like me kind of like being behind the scenes, just capturing moments as they unfolded throughout the day. So there wasn't that many post photos or anything like that. I guess there were some stressful moments when it came to like first dances and whatnot, but for the most part, I think it was pretty good. And, and I, I really loved it. I enjoyed it. And I couldn't wait to do another one basically. Uh, it's funny. I, I work, having worked with you now and even sitting here listening to you now, I think, uh, you have such a laid back personality that I think even if it was stressful that you would still like make it work and kind mm -hmm. of be, I mean, I don't know. I just think that you're <laughs> the kind of person that like kind of radiates that calmness. And so even if so. maybe, maybe even if it was a little stressful, yeah. you'd be like, no, it was totally fine. Like, yeah. All this. <laughs> Usually like it's, it's all good. And, um, and you know, and like I said, balance is a big part of my life. Like, um, I'm very spiritual, you know, I'm into hot yoga. Um, I'm into, um, you know, meditation and all that type of stuff. So I just feel like, you know, if you can remain calm, um, even throughout stressful situations, um, that they usually always end up working out for the best. Like if you're stressing about something, usually you don't even have to stress about it because it, I mean, the usually the brides and grooms love it, you know, if you're stressing about something or they're they were totally okay with it. So uh it is. And I do think uh part of it is is my background of news where I would like have a like a newsroom full of people that would yell at me if I was gonna like miss something or you know or whatever. <laughs> and it's taken me years to kind of like get out of that now and kind of be more on your level of like we'll make we're gonna make everything work. Mm -hmm. Like you know, it, it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's been a, a learning process for me over the last couple of years now, mm -hmm. kind of getting to that point. Cause I, I really did have to like, obviously you still want to be like on and like capture everything, but Definitely. I really did have to like unlearn though, that like fear of, um, failure or I don't yeah. know what, I don't even <laughs> know like what the right word is, but, um, just, just from my early on time in news, I just like, I, I remember early on, there was a story and I had, um, hit the record button like two seconds later than I thought. And so I was telling my boss on the phone, like, oh yeah, like they arrested this guy and I got him uh, coming off the bus. And he's like, you sure you got it coming off the bus? He said, oh yeah, you know, I, I was pointing the camera, got yeah. it coming off the bus. And then we get back to the station. And like I said, I like hit the button like two seconds later than I thought. Mm -hmm. And so what I thought I had captured, I hadn't, oh, or, you know, and yeah. like, but it was like, I mean, I think I only been at the station like a couple of weeks and okay. he was like, you could never have that happen again, no, you know? Yeah. And so it was like this fear, you yeah. know? So it's taken me a long time to kind of get to that point. But uh, I think it's important to kind of look at it the way that you do. Yeah. Uh, do you find that, that you have a soothing personality that helps with the couples too? Do you find that they kind of Yes. And so that is another thing I feel like I do, um, especially like if, you know, if things are getting a little rough or not even rough per se, but if, you know, if the bride um, is feeling like things aren't going the way they're planned or if something's happening wrong or something like that, I, I usually find myself always trying to soothe them and, um, and you know, it's going to be good. I'll check on it, you know, I'll try to be as helpful as possible too, just to kind of take off that stress from, from the couple as well. But I definitely do feel like I, I kind of soothe and kind of and make things maybe go a little easier throughout the wedding day. I, I like to, cause I, you know, I tell, I tell uh, my clients, cause my, mainly I'm always, I'm with the bride more than I am with the groom, but I let them know like, you know, I'm not only your wedding photographer, but I'm going to be like your best friend on that day. I'm going to be right there by your side, pretty much taking care of anything that you need, making sure you look great, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you need, I'm there. Um, so as someone that's kind of like, uh, you, you know, you got married, you wanted it, you got into photography, you've kind of like, you know, built this kind of over the last, you know, three or four years, mm -hmm. kind of this, uh, you know, having worked with like other photographers, been married, kind of gone through both sides and every other thing, putting together your business, like, what did you want your focus to be? Or like your message, like when you're trying to attract clients, like, what did you 
you know, like if someone went to like to your website mm-hmm. and like looked at like, what do you want them to know? Uh, what do you want, you know, the kind of that message to radiate out? Um, so basically, um, just, you know, I, you know, service like Tacoma area. I live in Sumner and I guess when they go to my website, I want them, um, to see that I can, um, that, you know, I take, you know, I do wedding photography and that I, um, I provide, um, romantic, um, and timeless, authentic wedding photography for, you know, madly in love couples, couples that have whimsical souls, or you just, just all, you know, just really laid, um, chilled back couples that want to have fun because I'm very passionate about what I do. And, um, and I really love to connect with, um, with people that with bride and groom that I'll be, you know, photographing for the day. So I really love to connect, um, and get to know them, especially as the day goes on. So I just want them, I hope that by looking at my website, they can see that I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, and, um, and that, um, and that, that I like to get to know the couples. That answered that. Yes, that was a great <laughs> okay. answer. And also, you know, that you have a strong sense of like family support too, and and you know, work ethic and things like that. Yes. Um, uh, you, so have, now that you you have your business, uh-huh. and, um, what are some things maybe you wish you knew now that you that you know now that you wish you would have known, you know, starting out? Oh man, um, I guess mainly, um, I guess maybe more so of building um, of of the importance of building a brand. I guess, I guess when I first started out, I really didn't realize the importance of building a brand. And I was so kind of um, stumped on what I wanted my brand to be um, and, you know, what um, kinds of brides and grooms I wanted to um, attract. Um, my colors, you know, my, my, my style as far as editing and whatnot. So I guess those are, you know, really big things. Things that's something that I wish I knew back then that I kind of know now. And um, like I'm in the middle right now of actually rebranding because I feel like I finally found my voice when it comes to my brand and who I'm trying to attract and and, um, and everything that I guess goes with that. Uh, so talk about that. What, did, what brought that on and, and how is that going and, and where are you trying to move that to now? So, um, so I guess what mainly brought it on is I started taking a course. Um, it's actually, um, Kyle Goldies. He's actually a wedding photographer. He also does other things, but he's also an educator. And so I've started taking his course. Um, although I brought the course a while ago, (laughs) but I just finally started committing myself to it and finishing up his course. Um, and, um, in his course, it's, it's been amazing. It's been very helpful. And basically he, um, he, um, he, he expresses the importance of finding yourself, finding your brand, um, and um, you know, and finding what what I mean, and finding your ideal clientele, attracting the clients that you want. And so, so I'm in that chapter now where he's talking about you know your brand and um, attracting your ideal clientele, and um, you know, and um, and and like colors, branding styles, logos, websites, and, and, and just all of that stuff right now. So I guess mainly that's what's really brought that on. Um, as I'm going through this course, I'm realizing, oh, you know, those are things I really need to pin down and get, you know, and, and, and have shown. So when people, you know, go to my website, they automatically know, oh, you know, this might be, you know, the photographer that I want to work with, you know, like we're on the same, you know, frequency, same level type stuff. But I mean, I guess pretty much that's, that's what's been really shifting my gears and making me um, finally spruce up my social media and trying to start putting up more content and, um, and just trying to attract my ideal clientele. Is that exciting or is that overwhelming and scary? You know, it's actually really exciting. Um, and see, I'm very indecisive. <laughs> and so, I'm one of those people where I see something and I'm like, oh, I love that. But then I keep looking and I'm like, oh, I love that even more. And so, um, and so I have a hard time making my mind up on certain things. And so, so for me, it's really exciting. Um, I, but I guess the main thing is, um, it, it's, it's actually helping me, um, you know, um, come to a decision about stuff and being like, I have to stick with this and this is it. And this is, you know, and this is me, this is the message I'm trying to convey. And this is what I want people to see when they're looking for a photographer and, you know, all that fun, great stuff. (laughs) Yeah. It's tough because it's, it's, I think it used to be a little bit more like, you know, if you just took good photos, um, maybe you would stand out. And I think that there's, especially in Seattle, you know, I don't know, I mean, I haven't worked, you know, weddings in, in many other communities, but, uh, it's so hard now to like just having good photos. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't necessarily like make you stand out. You know, it is about like building that brand and having that personality. Exactly. Um, 
Talk about, uh, you're talking about kind of like refining your editing style and kind of your, your look. How would you describe that? What do you use to, to kind of describe that to clients? Um, I guess, uh, mainly in, going back again to timeless, um, um, what I try to portray is photos that will stand time. So, um, never go out of style. So photos that you can look back on, um, two years from now, 10 years from now, and it's, um, and they'll still be in style, I guess. Like they're just timeless. Um, I don't do heavy editing or anything like that. I, um, I love light. So I look for light, um, and, um, just trying to have colors as, you know, as, um, consistent with, you know, I guess real colors, I guess. So, um, but I, I, but I also like brightness too, but not too brightness to where it's over, you know, overdoing it. You know? So I guess, um, I guess I, I would say that uh, my photos are more timeless, but they're also, um, light, um, um, but not too much bright. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but I no, I get, way. no, I understand. It, it's tough. Cause, cause I do think, you know, nowadays it, with video and photo, there's, um, a heavy emphasis on, uh, you know, color grading kind yeah. of of any kind and whether it's like really blown out highlights or whether it's, uh, even with video, like, you know, it's like really dark, like dark, 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 mm -hmm. dark, dark. Like it's so dark. Like we can't even see, you know, you're like, wait, what's going on here? Yeah. It's like, you're watching like game of Thrones or something. Like, what, what's going on here? Uh, and I do, cause I, I also gravitate more towards just kind of that, like, mm -hmm. um, true to life kind of what it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got married on like an overcast day, it's, it's going to be overcast, yeah. but you know, there's like people where, it was like, you wouldn't even know there was yeah. a cloud there, you know? Yeah. And so it's interesting. And, and I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that'll, if that trend is going to, is going to stay on or not. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, I hope at least for video, we, we get a little bit away from like just the murky, murky, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. And I think like trying to find your voice in that, what do you think? Um, I mean, I, I do think it's interesting. I don't, you know, I, I, you know, I feel like, I feel like trends are things that can, like, I feel like a lot of things that are trendy right now have been trending before in the past. So I feel like it's like a continuation of trends that are continuously trending and they're being tweaked just a little bit. But I feel like for the most part, they're all kind of consistent throughout. Um, so I feel like, um, like, like, I guess right now you have the dark and moody and then you have the bright. Um, and I guess that may be with trend right now, but I don't really know. I feel like, I feel like everyone just has a different style and I feel like whatever your style is, um, then you'll find the right clientele for you and the clientele that will love your style of photography. Um, so this class that you're taking, uh, I missed the name of it. What's the gentleman's name? Kyle Goldie. Okay. Um, and oh, I cannot think of the name of the course, um, for whatever reason, <laughs> but it is an amazing course. It's, um, it's a six week course. Um, and I believe the course will be actually closing soon, but I think, um, um, he will be doing like a really nice, um, black Friday deal for it. And then after that, the course will close for a while. But um, Kyle Goldie, he's an educator. Um, he's also a photographer with Luma Weddings. And oh, he's, he's local amazing. too. Yes, he is local in Seattle. And I cannot express how amazing he is and how much his um, course um, has been helping me um, find my voice, find my style, find my brand. And um, I'm already seeing... Um, more inquiries coming in, a less bounce rate as far as, you know, when it comes to my website and my marketing, my advertising. But, um, I mean, I can't recommend him um, enough as far as, you know, his um, education course. Um, and I wish I can find the name of it. Elevate. That's his podcast, actually. Um, but there, what is the course name? Okay, so the course is Wedding, Wedding Business Rockstars. Um, by um, Kyle Goldie. Um, and so it's a, like I said, it's a really great course. Um, and um, the course is about to close here soon. And he's going to be running a really great um, promotion for it um, on um, Black Friday. So any photographers are interested in, you know, learning your style and really um, helping with your marketing and finding your ideal clientele, I would definitely recommend it for sure. Uh, talk about the the motivation behind trying to, to take this and, and, and kind of further develop now. I mean, do you feel like, I think a lot of people like kind of get their stuff going and then they don't take the time to go back and reflect and figure out like, okay, now how can I refine that? Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of spurred this now to go through and kind of like, obviously listening to the course and do it, but like, why now? And like, what was the motivation behind like really trying to get your stuff in order? I guess once I was finished with my last wedding, um, for this year, 
I felt like, you know, um, I have learned so much more um, in that. I mean, it's continue. I'm, I'm a work in progress in a sense. I think I always will be a work in progress, but I feel like I've learned so much more and my work um, has, you know, is, is much better than, um, and just continuously growth. And I felt like now since I'm, I kind of know who I want to work with now. Um, I know what weddings I like. I know what styles I like. I know what couples I like. And I felt like that was mainly the, mainly the, the biggest motivation was knowing that, you know, I can, um, I can, I guess, um, I can elevate my work even more. Um, and I'm like currently going through this, um, journey in life, like the spiritual journey. So I'm trying to, um, do anything and everything that I can to, um, push myself, to motivate myself, to do better. And that's with, everything in life, every aspect in life. So my business, um, my, my fitness, my health, uh, my marriage, uh, you know, being a mother, just everything in life. I'm just right now at that point where I'm like, you know, I want to be the best person um, that I can possibly be. And I know that I have more in me. I know I can do more than what I'm doing. I can be better, you know, um, um, you know, not perfect, you know, I mean, striving for it, but I know that's impossible. But as long as I'm continuously striving, um, to be, um, I guess, my higher self, knowing that I can continuously push myself and strive further. I guess that's pretty much my main motivation. So you said you've always kind of been a spiritual person. Where does that come from, or how has that uh, kind of affected your life in that? Um, well, I guess late, um, recently I've been on this, like I said, I've been on this journey. And so I've always kind of been a spiritual person. I'm, I'm always reading, um, you know, spiritual guidance books or, um, books on finding your higher self and whatnot. Um, but, um, I recently met some new people, um, about, um, well, almost a year now, the beginning of a year. And, um, they're all for like, you know, they're, they're vegans and, um, they, you know, were trying to encourage me to, you know, to see the light in terms of that, of being a vegan and whatnot. And, um, um, and kind of off the story, but I tried that for five days, no meat. And, you know, it was great. I had more energy, but I love my meat, you know? So, <laughs> but they've also, you know, showed me more things uh, as far as, you know, spiritualness, um, you know, um, and I've been doing hot yoga, like I've been doing that for a while, but, um, um, just, um, doing that and, um, and then um, finding people like on social media that are like, oh, you should read this book. You should read this book. Oh, you should try meditation. You should try to reach into your higher self, tap into that. Um, and it just, just, I mean, I, I guess that's basically it. Just um, meeting that couple and then meeting different people on social media that are recommending books to me because I'm a huge reader. I love reading. Um, like right now I'm reading The Alchemist, which that not really much of a spiritual thing, but it's a great book. I recommend it to every, everyone. Um, but I guess that's pretty much it. That's, that's what's been pushing me to want to um, to want to go further into the spiritual journey of finding myself, I'm um, finding, just trying to find that, um, that peace, that everlasting peace that I know resides somewhere. Cause I feel like I, I need it. I need that peace. I, I want to find it. I want to search for it. I, I just want everything to be peaceful. I want to do everything with love, be love and just radiate that to people. And I, and, you know, and I feel like energy is absolutely everything. So, you know, I just want to, um, you know, find that, that peace and just be loved to everyone, you know, and, and hopefully I can, um, you know, show love and be loved to everyone and, and, and help people, inspire people, motivate people, uplift people, you know, with every path I cross, that's all I can do. Um, I mean, that's all I want to do is just help people, motivate people. And so I guess that's mainly, that's my main motivation. Um, but that's where it pretty much originated from. And so now, like, you meditate and things regularly? Yes, yes. Um, may nightly. Yeah, so I meditate nightly um, on the weekdays. On the weekends, I don't because I usually can't because the <laughs> there's no bedtime yeah. with the kids. <laughs> Talk about that. Talk about I've never been one to meditate. I, I probably could benefit from it. Talk about that. I would think so. Um, you know, it's really an amazing experience. Um, the first few times I started trying to meditate, um, it was hard. You know, I couldn't find that. I couldn't relax, you know, um, cause I used to have a really hard time relaxing. Um, but I couldn't relax. I couldn't focus, you know, but, um, as I continued to try to do it, it just got easier for me. Um, and then, um, and, and now I'm able to just, um, cause I started with an app on my iPhone and there's apps to where they kind of help you and they guide you through the meditation. So I started doing it that way. And then eventually I was able to just do it myself. So now I'm able to just find that time, complete silence, find the most comfortable spot for me and just go into that deep trance to where I'm, you know, I feel like I'm 
and the gal in this galaxy far away floating, you know, and I'm trying to find myself. And I feel like sometimes I can find myself like my higher self, but then sometimes I can. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's amazing. It's, um, it's bliss. It's, it's pure bliss. It's, um, it's an amazing experience, honestly. Um, I've even tried hypnosis, which hypnosis really helped me take it to the next level. So I did hypnosis, like this 21 day course um, with um, Tamara Westwood. She's located in, in Renton. She's amazing. Um, but um, I did a 21 day um, course with her um, where I was listening to the hypnosis from her every night. And um, after doing that for 21 days, I feel like my meditation has completely elevated and I'm able to even get more deeper into that trance and trying to put more things into my subconscious, you know, things in my life that I want to change and that I want to be more aware of, um, and, you know, and just putting like some things in the past behind. And, and like I said, just trying to continuously strive to be a better person, which each and every day that, you know, we're blessed to be here because, you know, life is a blessing. <laughs> um, do you, it is funny because I, I am thinking back now about, about working together this summer. And I do think that uh, that relates well to kind of the wedding day and kind of like going in with that like fresh start. Because I am self-admittedly like a pretty frantic kind of worker sometimes. I and I'm like, tell. I got to go here, I got to go here, I got to go here, I got to go here. But I think that having that, that energy, uh, you know, bringing that energy to the wedding day, mm. I think is, I think it's nice. And I think that that kind of, um, not only, uh, would, would rub off on the couple, but also like on the other vendors and things. Cause like working with you, it was like, Oh no, we'll get that now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, like I felt the same. Hey, do you think do you think we should have him go stand over there? Like, yeah, okay, let's go do that. And then it was like, you know, we're like sometimes you're working, you're like, we gotta, you know, you work whatever. <laughs> so uh do you find yourself meditating before weddings or bringing that on or I have a couple of times. Not all the time, but if I'm not able to do it in the morning, I try to make sure I do it at nighttime because I feel like it makes me huge difference. And if I'm unable to meditate, I just try to make sure I listen to some really good music, some uplifting motivational music, um, or I read, you know, a good book or, you know, a part of a book where I'm like, you can do this. Um, like I, I've been reading, I, I can't say, I mean, it's not a good word, but I've been reading, um, an F yourself. Um, who's the author? Um, I can't think of the author. Um, but, um, that's an audio book that I like constantly listen to, especially if I'm finna get into like a wedding. I listen to that before the wedding and it's like telling you what you need to do and what you need not to do. And it's just, it's really, it's, it's lots of motivation. And what's it called? Um, Unf yourself. Oh, I gotta say, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's really great. It's an audio book. So, so that is something that I find myself listening to before a wedding. Um, but there's been times where I have been able to meditate beforehand, and it really, it really helps. It really helps. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and so now, just kind of you know wrapping up. Um, mm -hmm. You're rebranding now, kind of, yes. uh, kind of like uh, pinpointing down, kind of where you want to be. Uh, what's your kind of goals now in terms of like you know couples and business and things? You know, the next year or two, five years out, where do you kind of see uh, growing now? Um, you know, basically just still kind of you know being around my area. Um, hopefully, um, maybe even maybe reaching a little bit more weddings per year. I'm not reaching, but doing more weddings per year. Um, you know, having a more definite, um, marketing strategy, um, you know, um, hopefully not having to market as much because word of mouth is coming in more so than anything. Um, you know, and I guess, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I, I just hope to be, I guess, more established, I guess, within the area, more well-known. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. I know that's not a lot, but <laughs> it's great. No, I think it's good. I think in, um, I guess I think, uh, kind of keeping that balance that you have and kind mm -hmm. of, kind of working towards that, I think is, I think it's really important and awesome. Um, well, I want to thank you so much for coming in today and doing this. It was great to catch up with you again. I, I know we chat online from time to time and mm -hmm. uh, especially like, uh, with the wedding that we did and you got yeah. it featured a bunch of places. And so I yes. was like, Hey, yeah. like, yeah, I came in. that's awesome. Thanks yeah. for that. Uh, so that was great. You know, okay. it was obviously great to see you and to connect again today. I want to thank you uh, so much for coming in. If people want to learn about uh, more about you and your photography company, uh, where would you have them go and check out? Um, they can check out my website. It's um, lessiebluephotography.com. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram at lessiebluephotography. And you're also pretty busy on Facebook and things like that. Too. Um, yeah, I am on Facebook a little bit. My Facebook is also facebook.com slash Leslie Blue Photography. 
Um, so yeah, I, I am on Facebook. Um, but right now my thing is like trying to get a, a hang of Instagram. So Getting you can find there. me on Instagram if you want to reach me right away. Instagram.com, let's do photography. Um, but you know, I'm also like, I'm a, I'm one of those photographers that text. <laughs> like you can always call me or shoot me a text. I honestly prefer texting. Um, you know, once, you know, I mean, if you have a quick question, you can always shoot me a text. My number is 206-854-1208. Text me anytime. I'm, I'm a night. Um, I'm a what? What'd you call it? Night owl. So night I'm always owl. up. So I think that's for me. I think we had got this scheduled. I think I was hitting you up late, and it yeah. was like, "Hey, we gotta, uh, we need to connect again." Because I yes. knew, uh, I knew I wanted to have you come in and talk, and so I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Awesome. Uh, this has been another episode of Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. Check back next week for another wedding vendor interview. Thank you so much.